In post-war America, big changes were taking place in the railroads. This change was known as the Transition Period. In 1912, a man named Rudolf Diesel invented the diesel locomotive. Then, in 1939, General Motors showed the railroads in the United States that these locomotives were practical in all areas of the railroad. Before this all happened, in the 1920s, steam locomotives ruled the rails from the New York Central Railroad to the Union Pacific. Railroads were booming, but were slowly declining in popularity because of the invention of the automobile and the airplane. For this, some big name railroads such as Santa Fe turned the newly developed diesel locomotive. Originally, there were three kinds of diesel locomotives, mechanical, hydraulic, and diesel electric. These diesels had different uses. The mechanical type was usually for working in yards. This was because they were smaller. Hydraulic and diesel electric locomotives were for mainline use. The man I'm about to interview is Ray Schofield. I met with him at the Providence Northern Model Railroad Club. Okay, well, the, the original, the first diesels that came out were very small and were not multiple units, and they were used basically for switching around yards because at the time they were felt they were, into, they were in, uh, undependable, and they, uh, the steam engines were more local, more dependable, so the steam engines were assigned to the main, uh, to the main lines. Uh, as the diesels became more efficient, uh, that obviously started to change. Most of the big steam locomotives, 240s and up, including the Challenger and the Big Boy, were withdrawn from use by 1962 because they became too expensive to repair and run. 240 is the wheel combination on a steam locomotive. The 2 is for one guiding wheel on each side in the front of the locomotive. The 4 is for two dragging wheels on either side in the middle of the locomotive. And the 0 means that there are no tracking wheels in the rear of the locomotive. Most small branch and narrow gauge line railroads have been shut down before the end of steam. If these lines were still operational, locomotives were most likely scrapped before the end of steam. The change from diesel to uh, from steam to diesel uh, affected many things. Uh, obviously, it affected uh, uh, the type of fuel they used. Most steam engines used uh, coal. Some did use oil. Uh, it affected the uh, uh, number of stops that a train had to make along the way, diesels uh, could travel a lot further. Two major factors in the growth of the diesel locomotive were EMD and GM. EMD is Electromotive Division and GM is General Motors. Diesel locomotives are much more fuel efficient than steam locomotives. Also, diesel locomotives are much safer and didn't need to stop every hundred miles or so for servicing. That is, that, that's the question is how high is up. Uh, depending on the locomotives available, both steam and diesel, uh, that, uh, that came into play. Obviously, if they had a lot of multiple unit diesels available uh, and uh, only one uh, you know, uh, large steam locomotive or one, sm uh, one small steam locomotive, it made no difference. An example would be the Pennsylvania Railroad's Broadway Limited. This train traveled from Manhattan to Chicago. This train can make the trip one way in 20 hours by steam and 13 hours well, by diesel. Because, again, because of the fact that the, uh, the diesels could run f much further without service, uh, that means that they could do long distances in uh, less time uh, and uh, it, it improved the timetables for the passenger service. Plus, there was some benefit to the cleanliness of diesel diesels over steam. The passenger service benefited from the transition because they were not only faster, but they were cleaner too. I came across an article called A Sentimental Journey on the Rails of Yesteryear by Milt Huntington. It was in the main newspaper, The Town Line. It said, Only once did I open a train window and leave my arm out the windowsill. My arm came away blackened with soot. I learned a similar lesson one day when I stood on Ryan's Hill overpass to watch a steam locomotive go under. Covered with soot, I had to go back home and clean myself up. While I was at the train club, I spoke with one man named Rob. Rob was telling me that the Boston Main Railroad was one of the later railroads to switch over diesel 
Even though, it was a major artery to and from the northernmost states such as New Hampshire and Maine. This is what because they were experimenting with Bud rail cars. Bud rail cars are passenger cars with diesel engines on the bottom of them. These cars were lacking in efficiency because they had two diesel engines on each car. Just so how bad these cars were, Rob said if they had a 12 car Bud train it would be like a 24 diesel locomotive header. Uh, uh, things a lot more efficient. Uh, you could travel a lot uh, further on uh, uh, on uh, on less servicing, uh, which lo lowered labor costs, which ultimately lowered uh, the cost per mile for transporting goods. The transition period was a turning point in history because it was the time that the United States rail system changed dramatically. When the diesels took over, we could travel across the country faster. In addition, we had a more efficient means of transporting goods. The diesel locomotives have been much safer to us and the environment since they took over. Steam or well, my preference is a uh, as a uh, rail buff is uh, steam just because of its aesthetic and uh, nostalgia value. Nostalgic value. Uh, as a businessman and as a uh, engineer, obviously diesels were much more efficient uh, and much more cost effective than were the uh, were the steam locomotives. Okay, thanks, Ray.